Hello, thank you for stopping by our Zoom call today. Today we got a treat. We got some pastors that actually were missionaries as well. So they can give us a whole new perspective on what it means to be involved in missions. Something they're going to talk about today is creating a culture of missions in their local church. Stay tuned. Are you wanting to develop your own short-term mission teams? Or maybe you have taken teams out, but you want to go to a next level of success? Well, what we've done is we've developed this mission packet for you on steroids. It covers from A to Z. It's over 50 pages long. You can download this today, brand it to your own ministry, and modify it to your needs. All you got to do is go to the description of this YouTube video, click on the link, go to our website, and download it today. Get started in short-term missions today. All right, welcome to Zoom call. I got a really cool Zoom call today. I've got brand new senior pastors, uh, Casey and Alicia. They're with The Life in Apollo, Florida. So congratulations to you guys. I know that you were on staff. You guys were executive pastors, but now you are like the senior pastors of the church. So I'm sure you're excited, but this was just Sunday. So I'm sure you're kind of like getting uh, into the groove of being senior pastors there locally. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much. You. And like you said, before we started, you said, what day is this? So I'm sure you're dealing with everything from right to left, north to south, to east and west. So, but uh, yeah. anyway, it's an honor that you guys would jump on the Zoom call uh, uh, with us. And, you know, the reason why I wanted you guys to come on is because yeah. obviously you guys were missionaries before. So you've been on this other side. So why not have... Uh, you you know, mis previous missionaries be on this Zoom call uh, because I think you could share a heart from both directions to give an insight because really the whole goal is here is we're trying to promote global missions. We're trying to encourage people to become part of global missions because isn't that the great commission? I mean, really, isn't that not the great commission? So, you know, Jesus said, you know, the utter ends of the earth not just like down the local street, but the other ends of the earth. And then really our goal is to encourage other people to be part of that. So right. and I think you guys are perfect examples. And the reason why uh, we want to hear what you have to say today. So awesome. well, thanks you know, for having um, if you don't mind, just briefly share, you know, with us of who you guys are and, you know, your ministry and, and, and a little bit of what you guys did in Honduras. Sure. Um, well, we've been in ministry for many years and um, everything from volunteering at the church to on staff, um, executive. I served as executive pastor at the church right now um, and then previous church before, as well as children's pastor. And so we've done a lot of things, but we also spent some time in Honduras and um, we moved there in 2013. And uh, one of the areas that we worked with there was uh, a, a local orphanage uh, called Mama Tara's Mosquito Orphanage. And uh, yeah, so we would just partner with them and, and try to be a support to them as much as possible. But um, a lot of that just was, we knew that um, back in 2013, probably 2012, God really started stirring in our hearts out of a couple of uh, local or, or we, uh, short-term trips to Honduras that this was an opportunity for us to go and, and become full-time missionaries. And so we moved down there um, after selling everything and, and making preparations. And we were down there for nearly a year, come back on furlough. And God just really called us back to the States to, to go on staff at the church. And so, uh, yeah, it was a, it was interesting because when we moved down there, we thought that this is where we'd be, you know, we yeah. thought that, the, the, the missionary thing, the full-time missions, that was where God had us. But it has really given us a unique perspective um, from both sides of, of being on staff as, at the church as a pastor, but also working in full-time missions. Yeah. And, and, you know, did you want to share something, Alicia? I didn't know if you were going to say something. But... Oh, I, think, I think you pretty much covered it. Covered it. Okay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the long version. But now I jokingly with you guys, because, uh, you know, you guys like literally took under the ends of the earth, literally. I mean, because where you were at in Honduras, it's Puerto Lumpira, right? Did I say that correctly? Uh, Puerto Lumpira? 
Yeah, that's like in the Mesquite area. And um, I know missionaries that that do mission work there. And it's you're not driving a car there. You know, uh, you're <laughs> literally either taking a boat or you're flying a plane there. And uh, the the uh, normal path is, I think, don't they connect in Trujillo or something like that? And then they start boating like the river system and then things like that. And then they, I, I was told that they actually like get on vehicles and then they get in other boats. It's like a long 16 hour trip via a boat. So yeah. uh, you guys are like in the middle of nowhere. So, yeah. you know, I can appreciate because see, you know, I have the, you know, cause you were sharing with me, like, even when like a boat came in and someone saw something on the boat, it's like all the missionaries started calling each other, what's up in each other saying, Hey, I saw marshmallows on the boat, come down here. Or, you know, uh, I, yeah. I saw spaghetti, you know, they got spaghetti in town. So or gasoline, guys, even propane, whatever. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you're out, you're just waiting for the boat to come in. So, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like to me, I have mad respect for you guys because, uh, you know, I have the things of life, you know, the convenience of life. Sure. I mean, there's some things that we're lacking here in Copan Rinas, you know, uh, the closest city, major city would be San Pedro Sula, which would be like three and a half hour drive. So, but at least I can drive there. You guys would have to like take a boat or you'd have to take a plane. So, but anyway, I like the fact that, like you said, you know, as senior pastors, you can say, I've got a unique perspective of missions. I got a unique understanding of missions. And that's really why I appreciate uh, you guys, and this is going to be a good Zoom call because uh, we've already briefly talked and we, um, you know, have some insight of what you were sharing. And I think it's really good for people to be able to hear this. Now, as pastors of senior pastors, you said that basically you've been given the floor to be able to make some changes within the church. And uh, that is in the missions department, you know, obviously one of the things that you're going to probably be looking at. But let's talk about the missions department because you were talking about like uh, 10% to missions. And you said that that is like a combined, um, you know, local and foreign um, uh, to, to missions. So if you want to mm -hmm. share about that a little bit, yeah. please. Yeah. So one of the things that, that we want to do, um, I think missions were a part of the church previously, but it was more along the lines of whatever relationship was there within the church. And there were, there was a family that had a connection in Peru with an orphanage there and they had done some traveling. And, and so most of their mission efforts um, were based on hey, let's partner with them to go and be a blessing in that area. And they also had uh, a, a mission out of Israel, uh, a work out of Israel that they had, that they had, they had sponsored on a, on a monthly basis. But what we wanted to do is kind of take that to another level mm -hmm. and identify, you know, we wanted to tithe as a church, basically on the income that came in. And so the idea is that we take 10 percent of everything that comes in and we push it right back out to the mission field. But that would include both local ministries sure. as well as foreign missions as well. And so we think that that's going to really uh, be able to to kind of spark within people the focus outside the church, not as much inside the church that we actually have a plan. It's not going to be random. And, and at times when, when opportunities arise, we'll have those as well. But on a monthly basis, every single time that, that, that money comes in, we're going to set aside 10% and we're going to have identified uh, specific types of mission works that that money is going to go and support and try to connect the people to those mission works as well. So yeah, and the I, way to kind of the culture. And I think I like what you said, uh, what you said about, inward and outward. And we, again, we talked about that as well, is that there's a propensity sometimes some ministries, it's more of an inward focus. It's kind of like, what are we going to, you know, I don't want to say this in a disparaging way, but it's kind of like, what are we doing to build our kingdom? You know, and, and I think sometimes, you know, that's an inward mentality. And, and, and in the long run, you're going to hinder the growth of your ministry, because people, People are, are, once people learn to look outside of themselves, they're attracted to other organizations or ministries that look outside themselves because they want to do something bigger in people's lives and touch and impact people's lives. So, uh, you know, I've seen ministries like that. It was more of a, we're going to build our, we're going to build our little kingdom here, but it's just like, it was stagnant. It was just, there's just constant stagnation and there was never really any growth because there was just no outreach. There was no outflow 
and, and showing the people of what true serving is and serving your community. And then, like you said, in missions. Now, one thing that you said that I like, I like how you coined this, the culture of missions. You know, mm -hmm. um, share about that. What does culture of missions mean to you? Well, I think, first of all, you know, culture is one of those things that it's hard to break and hard to establish. Uh -huh. And so the reason I use the word culture is because I want it to be a part of who we are. Um, when you think about, you, you know, living in a, a different culture, there's yeah. a lot of things that are just it's who they are. And so while we come, we as Americans may go into a foreign culture and, and have a certain um, idea of, of the way things are happening, maybe that's right or that's wrong, or, or it's, it's just different. The truth is, it's their culture, so it's just a part of who they are. And so we look at things different based on culture. And, and one of the guys I follow talks about when you're trying to accomplish something, culture will eat strategy for breakfast, is what he says. Oh, cool. And so we want to actually establish culture in people that missions is a part of who we are. It's yeah. almost like a core value that we establish, but it becomes more ingrained in when you think of the life church, you think of missions, you know that that's a serious part of who we are. And so it's Amen. just developing that, um, depositing that into people, letting them know that this is an important part of not only just our church, but it's an important part of being a Christian. Uh, having that outward focus is, is what I think allows churches to grow. Too much inward focus, in my opinion, is what leads to burnout in a lot of churches. Yeah. So you get a lot of people, you know, they're focused on building that internal kingdom. They're building that church. They're focused internally, internally, and ultimately they just end in burnout. And, but when there's that outward focus and something's happening and they're becoming a part of something that's bigger than they are, then yeah. that's, where, that's when something inside of them is stirred and, and they're energized and they actually feel themselves being a part of the kingdom of God. And so that's really what we're going for. There. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think it's still going to be a process because like you said, we're still, you know, new pastors and not that anything that they were, weren't doing before was wrong sure. or bad, but it's just, it's just ingrained in our hearts so much being former missionaries, just the mission field in general is just a part of who we are. So it's going to be a slow process. We still have to seek out the correct, you know, missions and things that we would like to include. Um, we still have to cast that vision to our church body. Um, because this is all still new. So it's a building process um, as of right now. So, um, but local missions um, in different categories, we want to be able to include things like, um, you know, maybe uh, abused moms or women's ministries, you know, mm -hmm. here locally, there's people here locally that do that. Uh, sure. Just a range of things, uh, trafficking, all of the things, you know, so we just we want to have a range because that includes more people as they learn how to give towards missions. They may find a calling towards orphanages or abused women or, you know, you know, all food of the, bank. the food bank. Yeah. All of the range of opportunities. So it's a building process, but that's yeah. definitely what's on our heart. And so that's the vision that we're going to cast for the church. Yeah. I mean, I just, I firmly believe that, you know, you know, as a society, we're taught to be self-centered, selfish, you know, I mean, and I just think that's a natural propensity. But, you know, when you, you know, in my life, you know, I've seen myself get into positions mentally, you know, and then when I start realizing, hey, you're just being inward focused, you're being selfish. And when I start pouring myself into other people's lives, it just seems like the hand of God is just it gets into whatever situation that got me down. It just seems like it's not even an issue anymore. And once you start seeing yourself pour yourself into other people's lives and seeing that transformation take place, you know, it, 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 it actually brings you to another level. So it's really the same thing within the body of Christ, you know. And so I was talking to pastor before this call, um, you know, we're preparing for a call next week. And one thing that I thought was amazing is he was a pastor for 13 years at a church. And what he did is he developed the culture of missions. He didn't use that term, but really that's what he did. And to this day, he's been retired probably about six, seven years now. To this day, they still maintain that culture of missions. It's like that is who they are now. They are very mission-minded church. They're very mission-driven. So that's you know kind of one thing that he feels like he left that church uh, you know, behind, you know, when he retired, he left that church with that culture of missions. And today he's, 
you know, he's proud that he still sees that that taking place and moving forward within that body. So because they're they're basically still passionate about the mission work that they have started years ago and they're still moving forward and they're still standing behind those various mission um, outreaches that they're doing. So yeah. you know, uh, one thing that you you said to me, uh, you said, can't turn a blind eye to foreign missions. You know, we're talking about mm -hmm. you, we're, we're talking about inspiring global missions, bringing people to that understanding. Why am I not doing it? Why should I not do it? You know, and you said, can't turn a blind eye to foreign missions. You know, share mm -hmm. share on that. What what did you mean by that? Well, I mean, I, I really I think it's just knowing that it creates something within someone. It's that looking outside of yourself. Um, you know, Jesus, the Bible teaches us that if we want to find ourselves, we give ourselves away, right? We abandon the things that, that we want. And we then was when we find ourselves, it's what you were just saying about when I start feeling down and, and depressed, that when I go and give myself away, I actually can break through that. But it's not what we teach in, in our society. And I think foreign missions are important because, um, especially in America, like it's real easy for people just to think, oh, well, there's a hurting person well, they can go get on government assistance or, oh, there's a, they have problems well, they should just go get a job, you know, or something like that. And so sometimes it's harder to kind of find that, um, that moment in America. But when you open an opportunity to a foreign mission to where it's a, where you go and you put your feet on foreign soil, a lot of times people are having a, an idea that I'm going to go make a difference. And while they, may well do that. What we've found more than not is when they, when they go, they actually come back different. Yeah. The difference was made in them. And it's because they decided to go and give themselves away and without even expecting it, without even uh, anticipating it, God does something amazing in their lives. And so I think it's a huge part of the believer's growth to just go and, and, and make that step. There's a huge step of faith that happens for many people in going into a foreign missions. I mean, into the field. I, there was this one guy that, that we took with us one time. He was so scared to go. <laughs> and he was worried mostly about the food, you know, yeah. because he was very picky eater and, and he was worried about getting sick and, and all this stuff. And he even the day before he went and he met with our, our senior pastor and had him pray over him because he was so just nervous. And he was really close to just canceling altogether, wow. but his family was going and he, he, his son was going and his wife was going and he really wanted uh, it to be a, uh, a family thing. And I'm going to tell you, the people got sick on the trip, but he never did. He loved the food and he had the time of his life. It was probably one of the best experiences he ever had, but he had to make that, that step and it was hard yeah. for him to yeah. go, but God, God does that in us. And I think that's why that's the opportunity that a lot of times foreign missions provides for people is to make the step of faith financially, uh, make the step of faith, uh, getting over your fears, uh, you know, going into an unknown. So there's so much good that comes out of it. And you're actually making time to go serve. So yeah. versus, you know, living life here in America, you just living life all the time. You just forget to go volunteer and serve. Mm -hmm. So actually, making a point to go putting money and time invested into it to actually take that time for a whole week or whatever it is to go serve you know it's that's life-changing because it's just something you forget to do whenever you're here in America usually you know there's a lot of hurting people here um, and there's a lot of people that do go and serve and help and volunteer in different areas here but for the majority people forget yeah. you know yeah. and so um Foreign missions is a great way to just yeah. make a life point. Is busy. Life is busy. And like yeah. you said, people can get caught up in life. But you know, something that you guys have said, you said a couple of times, isn't it amazing how that short a time, like a week, two week period can make a transformation in people's lives. And it truly does happen. I mean, there's no doubt in many cases and many times over, uh, more than not, it transforms people's lives. You know, these yeah. short term mission trips. So. You know, we were talking about that. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I think it's important to start talking about this is that you guys have noticed when people take short term mission trips, there's a radical trend. There can be a radical transformation in them in the local church. So it's kind of like a place where pastors should be embracing to get people to go to foreign missions because of that radical change. 
but you are telling me that you notice people becoming more servants in the local house of God when they have experienced uh, short-term missions. Mm -hmm. Can I speak today or me too? Yeah, I think you're good. <laughs> so, I, I think I was just thinking about that the other day as, even further as, after we talked about it. And what we I think what we saw happen was more of a uniting. So the people that went together on this trip, it created a bond between them. And so now they, they're going to church already. And now there's a bond that's created between them because they went and they you know, you, unique experience, unique together. experience, but also you, you really get to know each other on a mission trip. So <laughs> there's yeah. still things that happen, but it bonds, it creates this bond. And so now they're serving alongside each other on a regular basis at the church. Uh -huh. There's, and there's also been a sense of pride in their church because their church was a part of sending them. And we know that's important when you're going to go, it's important to be sent. And so the church being kind of backing them up and, and, Making that trip available is a way of sending them and partnering with them to go and experience what God has for them. And it does. It endears them to the church. It creates a tight bond with other attenders at the church. And so when any, there's opportunity to get involved, they're going to be there because their friends or family, the, the bond that they have, their mission family is now getting involved as well. So there's so many things that happen, I think, out of that that do end up benefiting their uh, time and experience at the local church. Yeah, I know one lady in particular that went on, I think it was our last trip or one before, um, but she went on the trip. She was just a single woman and um, she had a little bit of a rough time on the trip, I think. Um, but afterwards, I've noticed ever since then, uh, because our trip was geared towards an orphan ministry, you know, and the children that surround it. But now she is working, volunteering like full time in kids ministry. Mm -hmm. So after the trip, you know, so she got involved with children after that. She may um, not go back on the mission trip because it was difficult for her. Just but physically it, tough. It, but I she, think it did stir something in yeah. her of a, a, a want so to serve serves, children. Serves yeah. with the children. Yeah. So, but also too, I mean, in our conversation, was it, it was a result of a short-term mission trip, why you guys became full-time missionaries. Am I correct? Was it well, partially, partially. a big part of our story is when God called us back to going full time at the church, we committed to lead short term mission trips after that. And right. so every year we led a short term mission trip back to the area that we were serving at, that we were living in. And through that, so many people got connected to the orphanage. Um, I want to say that we probably took 50 people back to that area. And I don't I haven't counted. But I know I know one time we took 32 people. Count us one group. And one a lot group, of them are so. frequent returners because yeah, they right. just get connected with the children that we go see. But, but yeah, I um, they definitely we were able. It was hard to make that transition. You know, when you think you're going to be in the full time mission field and then coming back. But over time, you know, we can see how just that time that we were there um, fully connected a whole bunch of other people that otherwise wouldn't have gotten connected. Right. Yeah. So not only did our home church pick them up as a mission when they weren't supporting them before, because they were originally supporting us as, mis as missionaries. Uh -huh. Um, so then now the, the, the orphanage is on a rotation of support at the church, but we were also able to just connect individuals. And so a lot of the children there are now being sponsored um, through some of the people that we've taken. So they always want to go back and see them. And then we've always got new people coming. And so it's just, it's just made a wide range of connections since mm -hmm. then, just because we came back. Yeah. So. yeah. Now, you know, one thing that I, uh, I try to say to people, what is the, what is the biggest thing that missionaries need? And, uh, I like to try to surprise people because most people are going to say, we just need money. That's really what you, your biggest need. And, and I was talking to, uh, again, that pastor today. And to me, my answer is not that. My need, my answer is that I have people that will help me take ownership of the work that is here, that they don't say, oh, Sean, we're going to help your mission ministry. No, I want us to help our mission ministry. To me, that's, that's my true passion as a missionary, is connecting people with, with maybe a calling that God has for them to connect with mission work. And now it's our mission work. It's not my mission work that you're helping me do. It's our mission work. See, what I like what you guys did is that you didn't leave them behind. You didn't say, hey, see ya, we're going back to the States, have a nice life. No, they're a part of your lives. 
And to this day, that those organizations that you connect with in, in Honduras, they're still a part of your lives because you feel a part of that mission work. And, and you feel like uh, it's a place that God's called you to be a part of. And you're continuing that work to this day. You know, Absolutely. so, you know, the thing that I, I I'll admit I cried on the phone because I was interviewing him by phone. And the gentleman that he personally connect with, because they were high school friends and 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 school friends and the whole nine yards. So that's even why he connected with him as a missionary. And he didn't know his wife. He married a Guatemalan. And so he suddenly died like a year later after they connected. And and I just started bawling because because he still stayed connected to his wife. And to this day, uh, they, you know, uh, uh, they have exploded a ministry, meaning, you know, you know, he, his wife and he, him has still stayed connected to her. They didn't leave her behind. They didn't say, hey, see, you, you know, he died. We don't have no really in connection with you. We weren't school friends or anything. Have a nice life. No, to this day, they're working the ministry uh, of God together and building building the kingdom of God together in Guatemala. So see, to me, that that is true commitment. That's true partnership. Uh, that's true commitment. And that's, you guys are showing the same thing to that orphanage that you guys worked at or helped while you were in Honduras. You know, we, we were talking about, um, cause you know, again, it's not a, like a, a, a zoom call to make other pastors feel bad. That's not what we're trying to do here, but we're trying to inspire, you know, but we talked about why don't you think that pastors get involved in mission work? Now your answer shocked me. Cause I never would even have thought this. And that's why I love the pre-calls, because you really opened up my understanding and you helped me in my understanding. So why why do you not think that pastors get involved in missions? Yeah, well, uh, I'll preface with I've been serving as uh, interim lead pastor since January before being set in officially as uh, lead pastor and then was pretty much running the place um, uh, since October of, of previous year, as our other pastor was transitioning out. And the, the crazy thing that we had talked about is how busy pastors are. Yeah. Um, I don't think people realize it half the time, um, but there is, there is this overwhelming amount of energy that has to go into running the church. And for us, you know, we have a small staff and um, we have volunteers and then we have, but we have a building that we have to maintain it's, it's leased. It's not ours. And so there's all the thought that goes into what does it look like at the end of that? So there's just all of these, there's all of these things that you're constantly processing on top of spending, hopefully a, a pastor spending at least 10 to 15 hours a week, you know, preparing a message to feed the flock and, sure. and those things. And so with all of that, it's just, there's so much stuff that grabs your attention, no matter how much you may want to give into missions or missions to be a part it just becomes one more thing that that grabs your attention. And then if you can't really put effort into it, then you tend to just put it on the back burner. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know for us, we can talk about specifics uh, from youth ministry to worship to, you know, the challenges with COVID, especially uh, for, for a local church and just piling all that on. And anytime someone comes with something new, though I may love it and want to be a part of it, I have to put it somewhere. And if yeah. I can't carry it at that moment, I don't have anyone else to champion for it. It goes on the back burner. So just time and, and, and um, mental uh, bandwidth, you know, <laughs> is probably one of the biggest uh, the challenges that pastors have when it comes to missions. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think that really leads into um, if there's someone in your church, if that's something that you have a heart for, if there's someone in your church that has a connection or has a heart for missions, just go and ask them to help you lead it mm -hmm. or to present it. Because, you know, as, as a lead pastor, you know, there's so much going on. You don't have time to do all the research and stuff. And it also just kind of leads into the fact that lead pastors may not have a personal connection like we do yeah. with a yeah. mission or an organization or, um, certain um, organizations in your neighborhood. Like you don't know all the little things around your neighborhood that are ministries around your neighborhood that you can help too. Mm -hmm. You don't have the hours to sit and research it all the time. Yeah. So um, what I would say to an individual is if you have a heart for missions and your church isn't doing enough, just consider taking on that responsibility and that will really help out your pastor. You could lead that thing. You know, you can put together a missions um, board or a team mm -hmm 
that can oversee different missionaries that you would like to help. And that just takes that off of the pastor because sometimes they just don't know any personal missionaries. They don't know any, um, especially like, you know, ours, we were a small organization, you know, the first thing, if they want to do missions, sometimes all they know to do is just Google something and then they'll come up with a big list of all the big organizations. And Mm -hmm. yeah, they're doing great work, but also, you know, there's something to be said about supporting the smaller, there's thousands of missionaries um, out there that are just a smaller organization. And, and you don't necessarily find the ones that you can really connect with unless you have those personal connections. So if people are out there and you know of a missionary or you have a connection with an organization, I would suggest just really bringing that to your pastor and helping do the legwork. So. Yeah. And I think, I think that after our conversation, uh, cause I asked you personal questions as well, meaning personal for our uh, ministry and so forth. And I think that that made so much sense because I started looking at some of the, the organizations or churches that support us and, and many times over, many of them have, you know, a mission director or they have an actual mission committee. And then, you know, I jokingly said with you that I kind of took your your play out of your playbook because I was trying to encourage our mission director to be involved in radio here locally in Honduras. And it, uh, you know, she agreed and she says, oh, yes, we should do this. But then I felt my heart to take that play out of your playbook and say, look, how about if I do this? I'll just run with the torch on this. Just give me the people that you want to be involved and I'll go ahead and organize. Now it's just fast forwarding. Because, I mean, she she has so many things on her plate. She's a youth pastor, a mission, uh, 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 a mission director. She's she's involved in the digital media. I mean, she's so busy, you know. And yeah. so it's kind of like she may not be the senior pastor, but she's really doing the same thing. She's so busy that she does need people to take that torch. And, and like I said, it, it and now the ball is just kind of like now just going fast forward now as far as into – and to my need is saying, I need help with this radio to expand the radio throughout Honduras. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, that's, I, I think that's one of the critical components, you know, like you're saying, as a senior pastor, if you're wanting to get involved in missions, why try to carry that torch when you could delegate that to somebody to be able to carry that? And yeah. then, obviously, you know, obviously they're not going to check out. And I think you guys even said that it's not that they're going to check out. It's that they can check in and obviously, obviously oversee it. You know, they can submit to his authority, his or her authority. And, and, you know, basically make sure that it's not going, you know, left when it should be going right. You know, so right. Um, one thing you know, I, I, I was going to say, there's a story of a, um, uh, some friends of ours here, really good friends of ours. And it kind of goes along the same lines, January of uh, 2020, they approached me as the executive pastor and they said, Hey, what's the church doing for the homeless? And I said, well, nothing, we don't have anything for the homeless. And they're like, why not? And I said, well, is that something that you're passionate about? Well, yeah. I said, well, then maybe God's moving you to do something yeah. for the homeless." And fast forward, they ran with that. It wasn't something that the church picked up. It wasn't something that the senior pastor began to take on, but they ran with that. And now there's been so much blessings toward that ministry uh, just in this last year, they're overwhelmed. They can't even believe it. But it's That's because awesome. they're not only was it um, me being able to coach them that God is moving you, but an empowered to now go and do it. And that's one of the biggest challenges for for senior pastors as well is, is can I empower you? Yeah, to do it was it? something we were able to easily get behind and support because they're leading it. Yeah. Um, and so we were able to help them, you know, organize their meetings or, you know, different things like that and, and, and gather volunteers mm-hmm. and advertise for it because it's something that we knew that we could uh, support. Yeah. Um, they have their own 501c3 and all this stuff now, huge trailer, and they give supplies. And so it's been a really great thing for them, but we weren't the ones having to organize yeah. it all and do it. So. It actually outgrew the church, but it goes to the, it goes to speak that, listen, the church has a direction and a calling, and, and each church, God speaks specifically to the pastor, hopefully, of, of what that church is about. And missions are going to fall in there somewhere. Yeah. But it's getting the key people on board to run with the thing so that it doesn't just uh, overwhelm everything else that's, that's trying to happen. So, yeah. no, I, I think that is a huge thing for, for churches is to partner with uh, someone that can run with it. Now, I don't mean to cut this short, but as you living in Honduras, you know what a metal roof is. 
and ah. the rain is the rain is coming. And I'm like sitting here scared, thinking any second we're <laughs> going to get this downpour, and you won't even be able to hear me, and I can't hear you. So you know, obviously, I don't want to ruin our Zoom call with this, but uh, yeah. you know, but but really, we did cover everything. Like I said, I don't mean to cut short on you guys, and awesome. obviously, cut short on the people. But you know what I'm dealing with, and you know what's going to happen about here in about ten minutes, so um, or within the next five minutes. So, but I really about agree to get really with, cooled down. what's that? We're about to get really cooled down. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's going to roar it's so loud here in here in a few minutes. But I greatly appreciate you guys jumping aboard and doing the Zoom call, and uh, it means a lot to me and an honor that you would take time out to actually do the Zoom call with us. So I, I wish you guys many blessings. See, it's coming right now. <laughs> I think it's kind of cool for the Zoom call. People realize that, you know, uh, the metal roof, it's just going to be so loud in here. But anyway, yeah. God bless you guys. I really greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank yeah, you for having thanks us. Thanks for having us. We'll catch you next time.